The opinions expressed on this show are those of the host and are not meant to diagnose or treat any particular medical issue. Always check with your doctor or eye care professional before making any changes to your vision care. What a theme song. Now the talk continues on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. This is Healthy Eyes with Dr. C, live from the Best Buy studios at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. For many of us, our eyes are more than just a window to our world. They're part of how people perceive us, how we look, as well as how we see ourselves and others. There's so much more to healthy eyes than just their shape and color. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and find out how to keep your world in sharp focus for many years to come. Now with healthy eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. Eight minutes after the hour at NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, this is Healthy Eyes. We are live from the Best Buy Studios. 480-423-1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. Dr. John Chrysagas, Dr. C, apparently you don't like our new disco-ish music kind of... No, I, I, <laughs> what a theme song. <laughs> are, you, are you sure the mic was on when I said that? Ice, another promo coming up. <laughs> we had a collection oh, of them from last show. Yeah, he, he makes fun of me all the time, but uh, it's okay. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm fine. You have a guest today. I do. I do. I uh, We decided that um, since we've been talking about the eyes for the last 13, 15 weeks or so, and we've been talking about optometry, uh, I thought I'd bring someone in who is uh, studying to become an optometrist. Oh, okay. Um, she actually works in my office. Her name is May Soon. I'm not going to tell you her last name because this day and age, you never know what might happen. But May Soon, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, you guys. And uh, May Soon is actually uh, going to issue, and uh, she's in pre-optometry. And we'll discuss what all that means here in a second when we get there. But uh, she's worked in my office for about the last, what, year, year and a half? A uh, year and a half, yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's done quite well. Um She's very bright, and so I just thought we'd bring her in. And for those of those of our listeners that have uh, children that are possibly, you know, in high school or early in college and haven't figured out what they want to do with their lives yet, and they're thinking out about possibly a medical career or something in the sciences, health sciences, I thought that uh, since this is what we talk about every day, we'd talk about optometry and what it takes to uh, get through the university curriculum and what it, what uh, you have to do to apply and everything else. To, that we talk about that today. Great. What made you kind of get interested in this doesn't seem to be something that would normally be the the typical career path for someone and, that's wait, in, wait, and why do you say that <laughs> well because you know it's like uh it takes a lot of persistence it takes a lot of studying and it usually means uh, a lot of hard work to get to where you eventually want to be it's not like uh you, you typically think of something more glamorous or especially for someone who you know i hope you don't mind me saying but for those who can't you know see on the webcam at uh, nbc1260.com um, you're very attractive and you know sometimes people uh, tend to want to be you know you would think stereotypically you want to be a, a star on a reality tv show or could be all kinds of different things instead of something that takes a lot of persistence and really uh make a career out of long term and kind of what led you toward that kind of decision and is that something you see uh that that other people you you hang around with your peers want to do or do they kind of want to go for what seems to be kind of more glamorous and easier to achieve and and that kind of thing kind of the, the pop rock star kind of thing or um well, that's a loaded kind of yeah that's a lot of questions you <laughs> got there um well the story actually started about 16 years ago uh, my parents grew up in bangladesh which is a tiny little country in southeast asia so i've seen a lot of poverty my entire life and my dad was like oh you know you should become a doctor you should become a doctor so that you can help these people that really need your help and i thought about it for a really long time and i was like you know if i can give a poor child a new heart he'll still be sick but if I have the opportunity to give a poor child eyesight, then now they have opportunities so that they can be become a doctor, they can become a school teacher, and they can raise themselves up. So that's kind of how I see it. And I'm going from there. I'm studying biochemistry at ASU with a minor in nonprofit administration. And um, I think with those two 
features combined, I can start, start at my own nonprofit, and especially what I'm learning from Dr. C, how to run my own practice. So, so you're learning the business end as yep. well as the kind of science end. You know, exactly. to go back to your show, uh, prior to mine, you know, a few weeks ago we were here and they were talking about uh, doctors and how they run their offices and things like that. And there, it is it is a business, and uh, that's something that uh, no matter what doctor you are, whether it's an optometrist, ophthalmologist, uh, GP, uh, there is... There is a business aspect of running your office, especially with the the way the uh, healthcare is changing and everything else. You you giving medical care is the most important thing that we do, but you have to you have to be able to run a business at the same time. Mm-hmm. And w- what have you learned about the business aspect of of eye, eye care that you wouldn't have learned just from school there's from actually a, doing it? There's a lot more that goes into it. It's kind of like a magic show sometimes, <laughs> like behind the scenes, seeing everything that goes on. You know, the actors have to Side all be of in hand, place. Slide of hand. Yeah, <laughs> the hand is quicker than the quicker, eye. Exactly. No, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, but the you know what we you know what we try to do is you you, you try to match or to mix um, the medical aspect and the business aspect because you have to if you can't if you can't pay your bills you can't keep the doors open and so you know that's uh, new practitioners have trouble with that but as you as you learn uh, and there are people out there that are willing to uh, to teach you how to do that too but that costs a lot of money so a lot of times we. Uh, we learn as we go, but now that I've been doing it for as long as I have, uh, hopefully my students learning that there is a little bit of uh, of a business aspect to it. But getting back to the how we did this, so because I was going to ask what your major was, and so you said biochem, mm-hmm. because the and so as far as the um, the way she found me, like isn't there a like a pre optometry club or something? Yep, I'm actually the issue? president of that club right oh, now. President, I'm telling you, we don't. You mentioned about why didn't wow. she become a rock star? Or <laughs> she is a rock star. Yeah, I mean, and essentially, as far as what she does and what her ideals are and where she wants to go, and I'm just at the tip of the iceberg. I got more coming <laughs> for you, but nice. so what does the pre optometry club do? Uh, so our main goal is to let people know what optometry is. When I'm tabling at some pre health events, people don't know what optometry is, and it. Honestly, kind of hurts my feelings. I'll be like, so. Tried doing it for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> People still. Well, one of our first yeah, shows, we, <laughs> we went over the you know the three O's of ophthalmology, optometry, uh-huh. and opticianry. And, and then last week I said, uh, um, by the way, what kind of a doctor are you? Yeah. yeah. So it's. Uh, <laughs> you're like, haven't you been paying attention? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. So, yeah, we bring in um, different schools so they can talk about their programs and just outreach in the community. People don't know how to take care of their eyes, especially living in Arizona. People take their for granted so we try to pass out sunglasses you know just let people know what's going on are those the ones that uh, when your eyes get dilated the ones that have your <laughs> yeah, little logo yeah, we, on the side we give it little solarettes that uh that they they were so everyone thinks they just had their eyes examined no i'm sure they uh ours are a bit more fashionable <laughs> right, that's what you said yeah <laughs> yeah so so they, so then she decided to uh i think i just got a was it a text or an email or something yep, i just uh, called up one day yeah, and uh asked if she could come by and um did you uh, start volunteering um, no way. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she. I'm sure she would have. But uh, she came in about asking, asked about a position, uh, and so we uh, we put her on the payroll and put her to work so she could learn something. Very nice. And she's done. She's done very well. Uh, you know, because after I've, I've been around for so long, and a lot of uh, my patients know my, me and my staff, obviously, and so uh, a lot of times they'll talk to me about my staff and what they've done to them and how nice that person was or how maybe someone else wasn't quite as nice but uh i've always gotten great comments from about my soon where they say she's uh you know very intelligent very animated and uh, does a great job so i'm sure she'll do well in the future uh with bedside manner or chair side manner in our case <laughs> 15 minutes after the hour you're listening to <laughs> healthy, healthy eyes, eyes right? Healthy eyes. I, I was going here. to sleep. We're going to break. Okay. That's okay. No problem. 15 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260, 96.1 FM. We're not going to shift this part of the responsibility to you for the rest of the show. Um, and if you'd like to get in on the conversation and ask some questions about uh, actually doing uh, the eye care as kind of uh, uh, your career path, maybe you're a younger person listening, might have some questions. Maybe you're uh, a parent who might ask um, how 
how you know how, how, is this something that would be really good for uh, my child uh, to consider or um, wh- what does the career kind of path look like and what does the opportunity look like for uh, for the, the future is it a, a something where there's a strong demand uh, any kind of question you might have 480-423-1260 is the number to call and we'll get into more things like uh, are sunglasses important and that kind of thing because that's very important to find out and we'll have you answer some of the the questions that Dr. C would normally answer if that's okay. (laughs) When we get back 17 minutes after the hour, we will be back with more of Healthy Eyes right after this. The doctors and staff of Tempe Eye Care Associates at 7511 South McClintock Drive in Tempe are committed to providing you state-of-the-art eye care services and products in a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Remember the bionic man? We're not quite there yet, but we're not as far away as you might think. Through annual comprehensive eye examinations, the goal at Tempe Eye Care Associates is to not only maximize your visual performance, but to ensure and maintain your healthy eyes. As part of your annual examination, your visual acuity will be measured and a test known as refraction is conducted to determine your eye's refractive power. Further tests are performed to determine your visual coordination, muscle control, and focusing abilities. Your examination will include a comprehensive evaluation of your eye health to detect diseases such as glaucoma, cataracts, and retina and optic nerve abnormalities. The ocular health evaluation includes neurological assessments, measurement of internal eye pressure, and a thorough examination of the internal and external structures of the eye. Tempe Eye Care Associates also offers the OptoMap Retinal Examination System. OptoMap allows many patients the option to forego dilating drops by providing an ultra-wide view of the retina. While it doesn't replace dilation in all patients, it's an option for many. After performing these tests, their doctors will discuss your results and, if needed, explain your prescription and give you a better understanding of your overall eye health. Traditional options such as glasses, contact lenses, and eye medications will be discussed, as well as any other options you may need to consider. Dr. C is available to assist you personally, so you know you're getting the best available eye care, even if you're not on the Valley's basketball, baseball, hockey, or football teams. You'll see better after you see Dr. C. To make an appointment to visit Dr. C, call his office right now at 480-967-4910. That's 480-967-4910. Help keep your eyes healthy, regardless of where you live in the valley, by starting with a call to the office of Dr. C. 480-967-4910 today. 480 480- 967-4910 or visit www.tempiicareassociates.com That's www.tempiicareassociates.com The talk continues, and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here's your host, Dr. C. 20 minutes after the hour, we're back at NBC 1260 96.1 FM, uh, live from the Best Buy Studios. The number to call is 480-423-1260, 423-1260. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're here talking with Maysoon. She's a pre-optometry student at Arizona State, and we're talking to her about what it is she's going through or going to go through in order to uh, become an optometrist. And we just got done asking her why she decided to do this, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening uh, in her curriculum in her courses at ASU. You're a senior this year, right? Yep. Graduating in May with a degree in 
Biochemistry and Nonprofit Administration. Isn't that what she said before? See, yeah. so that was her major and her minor, and she's going to do it in May. And um, why don't you just tell us what, I mean, I know when I went to school, we had to take, you know, a year of bio, a year of biology, chemistry, the organic chemistry, biochemistry, microphysics, you know, calculus, all that other stuff. Is that still basically what it is? It's exactly the same, actually. Okay. They just uh, hopefully know a little bit more now than they did 30 years ago <laughs> <laughs> when I went through. But it's, it's a rigorous, uh, how many hours do you typically take in a semester? Uh, about 18. Right. Wow. And, and uh, so that hasn't so changed either. Is it normally 20 hours or is it 18 hours? The or average 16? hours is usually 16. That's usually. So it's two additional hours. And you could you could probably get by at, at 16, maybe going up, a, I mean, depending on what how many hours you need for your, your degree in your major. Uh, but they make you take so many. Sometimes it's hard to graduate in four years because they make you take so many things in different uh, curricula that you have to get back and you still have to take electives and everything else. But typically, you can do it in four years, and, and she's done that. So you're taking biochem and nonprofit, and how do you? Um, are you going to use the nonprofit as part of what you intend to kind of do as part of the giving back to the community? And, and it sounds like a lot of your your training and a lot of the area or the uh, the direction you're going in is more of a, I, I want to give back. And, and help people. And we'll talk about that in a second, on. too. Because <laughs> this story does continue. Uh, and it's just going to show me soon is not, not your average uh, next-door neighbor gal. Okay, and then uh, you have to answer that. May soon has to answer the sunglasses question. Oh, no problem. We'll, we'll get to that. All right. But the, uh, so you're, you are... Uh, I'm going to skip over the schools and applying to the schools only because Maysoon hasn't. She's graduating now, and normally you'd be applying to professional schools right now to, f to find out where you're getting in. And you'd be finding out about now whether you're getting, getting in for next August or September, depending on when the uh, when the school starts. But you haven't done that yet? No, because she's, uh, she's going to do... Speaking of giving back and doing other things, why don't you tell us about what you're doing next year, or hopefully doing next hopefully. year? Hopefully. So I'm actually a finalist for the Fulbright Grant, which wow. would uh, give me nine months to s teach English abroad. So I applied to teach English in Bangladesh. Wow. So if I get that, um, I would leave in January, and nine months from there, I would be teaching English. Uh, I find out about That's that within the next few weeks, actually. So if I don't get that, my goal is to actually go to Turkey and teach English there. They have a few different programs around that area, so... Wow, that's really impressive. That's a, that's incredible. Which is quite impressive, only because she's a young person that has goals and ambitions and wants to do, fulfill them, and she's going to put off you know, a year of professional school to go do something that she feels very um, interested in and uh, uh, wants to help people out so is it because you want to do that sooner or does that help your career path to, to stop and do this in between or are you afraid that if you do stop and do this in between that you might not get back to it or i'm actually in no rush at all like i'm i have a goal in mind i know i'm going to get there eventually but i want to do all these things in between how do your parents feel about that are they supportive of that or are they like stay home be with <laughs> us don't fly from the nest <laughs> um they're actually pretty supportive of what i want to do they've always let me and my brother kind of let free and just follow our dreams so i really appreciate them for that is your brother younger or older he's actually older he's living in san francisco right now and he owns his own company so oh okay what kind of business uh computer engineering facebook applications something along those lines and so your parents have two very smart kids <laughs> and very aggressive kids who want to just reach out and do what it is that they they want to achieve and they're very supportive yes yeah, you know and as far as the you know professional advancement going to uh, Bangladesh to teach English is not going to enhance her quote unquote professional career I mean typically you would go from one to the other and just keep moving through which is what most people do the fact that she's not doing that is nothing against her professional development by any means she's plenty young enough where that's going to be a positive on her resume and so if she applies to optometry school next year rather than this year that's not going to be a negative at all as a matter of fact that's going to just show that she does have dreams and ambitions and she wants to be more well-rounded and uh you know experience more things in the world before she settles down to because once you start you got now you got four years of optometry school and if you do a residency or any type of fellowship after that you've got a couple more years or you can go right into practice but nonetheless taking a year off to go doing so to go do something like that at this age when she's got the energy and the ambition there's nothing wrong with that at all 
Fantastic. So I just we just wanted to go, like I said, when we were talking about, you sit still. We'll get to the questions about uh, <laughs> where she's going and what she's uh, and what she's doing. She's uh, this is how I get us into trouble. Yeah, because she just he just marches ahead and doesn't <laughs> let me play out my agenda. You know. <laughs> so let's assume you get the Fulbright scholarship, which she's a finalist. I'm sure she will. I mean, that, that's quite an honor uh, to be able to. Uh, um, to achieve that goal and go do something that you've always wanted to do uh, with that organization. But let's assume... That's more than just academic. That's actually the living expenses and All of that's paid for, but I would be teaching English at either a high school or university level. Yeah, so, you know, but when... So sometime during the next year, she'll have to get all of her... uh, resumes together and her all her packets done have you taken the OCAT yet no i'm going to take that this summer okay, actually optometry college admission test is that what they still call it by the way it's just the 018 now okay, 018 it was take it, out it was, the c okay it was so with the you, know, you take that it's a of course you have to take to get into any of the optometry colleges and it just tests you on everything you ever learned from the time you were born and uh <laughs> <laughs> you know but with, you know all schools have it you know the lsat for law school and and everything else but the uh so you take that you get a score they look at your uh what you did in school uh uh, try and find out about you as a person so they can see what's going on because just because you have a 4.0 in college and I'm not saying she does but just if you have a 4.0 doesn't mean you can deal with people and if you have a 2.0 or a 2.5 doesn't mean you might not make a, a great doctor either so they have to go and find out as much as they can so that with interviews and for- forms they fill out will you be able to do that from Bangladesh <laughs> I definitely hope so <laughs> because how many uh, excuse me how many schools are there? There's actually 21 schools in the nation right now, and they just opened one up recently in Glendale, the Midwestern University. Yeah, I think they're, what, second years, third years? Uh, I want to say Glendale, fourth Glendale, Arizona, or California? Yeah, Glendale, Arizona. Glendale, Arizona, okay. Yeah. And uh, Midwestern University opened one there. We're just, we can't decide whether it's uh, they're in their second year or third year of, uh, of class, but the... Um, Maybe someday we can have someone from there on the show, too. Uh, I know a few people over there because a lot of the faculty are doctors from this area that uh, that moved in there. So there are 21 schools. When I applied, there were 12. Um, but there's a, a larger demand now, so uh, there's 21. How many have you applied to? Uh, my goal is to apply to five. Okay. I only I only wanted to apply to one. I wanted to apply to Pacific College of Optometry. That's well where Dr. She C went. And that's, as well she should, because that's, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> is that your alma mater? That's where I went, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> but, but even along the West Coast, you know, you have Midwestern now, but you've got one in, in Los Angeles. As a matter of fact, you're going to have two in the Los Angeles area. I think a second one's opening. Really? Yeah. And uh, you got one at Berkeley. Uh, you've got one at, uh, in Oregon Pacific, where I went, and then heading heading east from there, you know, you got Oklahoma and Houston. And what about for kids who can't travel or kids who aren't in the situation where they're eligible for scholarships or kids who just don't have the resources or the parent, maybe the parental support? What's here in the Valley that somebody can kind of focus on to, to kind of learn to, to get into eye care? Well, the as far as the... Um, there's a lot of financial aid, uh, and, because, and I say that only because one of the biggest problems that students have nowadays is when they got out of school, they're in so much debt. And scholarships are important, um, as is financial aid. And when I went to school, there was no optometry school in Arizona. Like we said, it's only two or three years old. They had something called the Witchy Program. And the Witchy Program was a um, an association they had between a bunch of Western states where if they didn't have a certain professional program in that state, you could apply to another state as an in-state resident. And that way they shared the universities that way. And so I went up to Oregon um, on the Wichita program, which I still had to pay, but I paid as an in-state resident rather than an out-of-state. And the schools actually like that because they know the vast majority of the tuition is going to get paid for by the state with the stipulation that you come back here to practice. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so there is a benefit. I was going to oh, yeah. So if I decided not to come back to Arizona, I paid them back. Ah, and okay. So you, that's you that's have to good. give them. That's I good. Think so you give giving, them yeah, there's a trade off. A year and a half to two years per every year they. You're pay not doing for something you. that kind of is um, shoddy. Yeah. or not shoddy. But no, they, uh, they, not, they did it ethical. They it's, did it back yeah. then. Now I assume now that there is one here. And now nowadays it's hey dude, can I use your address? Because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know. But, yeah. I want to be an in-state resident. Yeah, yeah. I'll come back and practice there. Yeah, yeah. So we that was the you know the stipulation when you went. You knew going in that if they paid for your you had to come back kind of like there are a lot of a lot of people go to uh, professional schools on military scholarships and the key to that is if the military pays your professional um, tuition you're giving them year for year possibly two years for every year they pay and that's how the military gets their 
officers uh, that are in the med- medical corps, they pay their tuition to uh, go to school. Okay, Mason, you want to try and kick us to break? You just say the stuff that's up here and uh, see if you can do that. All right, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, live from the Best Buy Studios. If you have any questions, give us a call at 480-423-1260. We'll see you soon. Come on, Lisa. Let's go before it gets dark. Well, we haven't talked to everybody yet. Why do we want to go so soon? You know I don't like driving at night. The lights on oncoming traffic and reflections are just awful. I'll drive back tonight. I have my anti-reflective lenses with me. I don't have that problem. Works for me. Let's get some more food. Later that same evening. Okay, everybody, smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflexive lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Hi, I'm Mark Shander, executive producer of Healthy Eyes. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Your eyes are more than just your window to the world. They're how other people see you and sometimes see right through you. Find out how to protect your vision with the latest technology in eye care this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Now the talk continues and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here's your host, Dr. C. 33 minutes after the hour, we're back at NBC 1260, 96.1 FM. If you have a question for me or may soon, give us a call. We, we don't take questions for Mark. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm lucky I'm allowed to speak. At <laughs> give us a call at 480. Last week. Oh, he, he was brutal last week. Anyway, 480-423-1260. Give us a call. We'd like to speak with you if you have any questions about uh, optometry uh, or a loved one or... Um, Questions about a loved one. (laughs) A loved one going to optometry school. Oh, okay. Thinking of optometry. I'd like to find out if my wife still cares for me the way she did when we first met. That's a totally different show. Mason, what do you think of that? That's really I'm not Frazier. (laughs) I'm not Frazier Crane. This is the wrong radio show. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Now we finally have someone who potentially could be Rod. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Dutch hates it when I call him Rod. Yeah, I know. (laughs) So we've been talking with Mason about uh, optometry as a career. Uh, She is a senior at ASU. She's going to graduate in May, hopefully. She's got a the plan. few more weeks to uh, to go. Hopefully she makes it. No, by this time, <laughs> by this time, by this time it's a done deal. <laughs> you probably already bought your cap and gown, haven't you? No, actually no. I haven't. <laughs> Not making any promises. Okay. <laughs> So maybe she's got a couple of grades that are tenuous. Well, like, let me ask. I, you're, I know you've got a lot of uh, stuff that's on topic. Let me take us off topic, as I usually do. <laughs> what do you do when you're not studying and you're not at school? What do you do for fun? For fun? Um, I'm part of a lot of student organizations on campus, so I give tours to p- potential Sun Devils. I actually really like that. That's kind of one of my hobbies, telling people why I chose to stay in Arizona. Um, I'm a part of a group called Camp Kesem. So a lot of student organizations, those are my hobbies. When I'm not at school, I'm either working or sleeping or in the library. Okay. And she Great. works. She works. Yeah, we put we put her to work at the office. You know, because she's the quote-unquote low man on the totem pole because she's the youngest. So when she gets there, they, like, sit down and make her do everything. But I'm not supposed to notice that. <laughs> okay. What are the things that you do in the office that, that you kind of are being depended on for? So kind of when a, when a patient first comes in, are you the first person that they see or...? 
Uh, so my job title is an optometry technician. So I do all the pre-testing. So once the patient is all signed in and all that good stuff, I take them back. I get all the GDX, like the glaucoma testing done. and um, That's the eye puff. That's one of them. That's yeah. one of them. Here's the quiz. Now, you, you, you didn't hear the show last week, right? No, I did not. Okay. So is the eye puff test the glaucoma test? Don't answer. Is the, is the eye puff test it the It checks glaucoma? the pressure. Yes. yes. That was the right answer. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because a lot of people say that this is the glaucoma test, but it's not. It's a test that... It's one of the tests we run that would help us make a diagnosis of glaucoma if indeed everything else came into place. But the air puff itself is not diagnostic of glaucoma. Yeah, not the single factor, but people will come and sit down at every single machine and they'll be like, is this the air puff? Is this the air puff? <laughs> like, yeah. Calm down. It's coming up. Don't worry, buddy. So people are really bothered by yeah. that. Yeah. Air puff. But we have, we have other ways. And I've told people that, you know, if they come in and they'll, and they say, I can't stand that thing. Now, some people say they can't stand it, but it's really not that bad. But I'll say, if you don't want it, just tell them next time and I'll do the one in the office. It's not, it's not that big a deal. Is it a big machine? Not really. No, it's no. And the thing I'm that, just asking because you you know you owe somebody uh, bringing that over to their house for a <laughs> yeah. card yeah. game or something. I got a call last what? week. He's like, "Can I can you bring that thing over to my house what? so I can just do it on my friends?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Whatever." Uh. <laughs> but uh, you know, but what she does is uh, she's part of the um, of the team that does all the preliminary testing, and then they'll take patients and do some of the uh, testing afterwards, whether we need other supplemental testing after the exam. Uh, they may teach them how to put contact lenses in, take contact lenses out, uh, you know, insertion removal, or taking care of them. They may show them how to use their drops for prescribing drops. Um, there's all different kinds of things that uh, they help me out with that I can delegate to them. Okay. And, uh, and she's learned it quite well. So I think going forward, that's going to give her a uh, an edge because as we were talking during the break, I said, when I went to optometry school, I didn't know anything about it, really. I just knew that uh, I had been going to see the optometrist for, you know, 18 years, uh, getting glasses and contacts because I was blind. But her going in with the knowledge of... Um, you know what it is, what it takes to make a pair of glasses, what the prescription is, what a contact lens is, how they fit. Because uh, now we have her looking at contact lenses on the eye to see uh, to see how they fit and evaluate the uh, centration and movement of that lens on the eye. And so the more we can teach her, the more she's going to know when she when she does that at school. So going back to the people that are listening, and uh, if they have someone asking questions, one of the great things they can do is see if they can either shadow someone in the industry or get a job um, at you know, an optometrist's office or someone to see, you know, what it's like in the business. Um, uh, <laughs> the, uh, okay, that's why I hit the table. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm Greek. I just move my arms all. My, my father told me he was watching on the webcam last week, and he told me not to move my hands. So I said, I'm on the radio. How do you remember know? the scratching thing? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> but anyway, you know, going and getting yeah, a job skin somewhere issue there. What's the to problem? learn the uh, hey hey. <laughs> To learn the ropes as far as learning how to... Um, uh, I lose more hosts this way. And he, wonder, and he wonders why I stare at him half the time. But, uh, but like I was saying, if you can go to a place and learn the trade as far as what it takes to make a pair of glasses, what entails uh, prescription, what entails contact lenses, and that's just going to, to help you out in the long run. You may find something as you do that that uh, outside of the... You may decide that selling glasses and dealing with making glasses, uh, you like that more than the aspect of being the doctor and, uh, and coming up with the prescription. So it just uh, opens doors to let you know what's going, what's going on out there. Okay. Uh, I don't want to take you too far off the track because uh, your outline is, is really good. And I know a lot of people are listening and they want to find out, is this really a career path that uh, maybe my, uh, my, my son or daughter might want to take? And would you recommend that for someone who hasn't made that decision yet? I definitely would. It is competitive. Uh, you're going to compete with people from all across the nation. You're going to take a really rigorous exam, the OAT, like Dr. C mentioned earlier. Um, but it's a great field to get into. You can't kill anyone. No one's afraid to come see you. Uh, you can go into a whole bunch of different sectors. You can own your own business like Dr. C does. You can work in the nonprofit sector or in a hospital. So you have a lot of options and it's definitely just a comfortable field to be in. Okay. Uh, yeah, wait, you can, you can ask it. You can. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Bree on the other side of the glass. Um, I'm doing some board operator stuff. And I was just wondering from um, Dr. C and from you, could you remind me your name again? Maysoon. Maysoon. Okay. I didn't want to mess up the name because it's so beautiful. But anyways, who was your mentor and did you have one? 
I think you should be on this side of the glass. <laughs> she's got a great yeah, we, we, we technically could change. I mean, she's I, got a great voice. She should oh, be, well, I, she I should be in there treat- doing that. And she should be, I could just tell her what to say. She sounds a lot better Ooh. than I do. Yeah, Brie Dunn uh, does the, uh, all the, uh, the stuff in the morning, all the, um, uh, the, the weather and participates uh, in all the gun I'm, talk not, show I'm not here to talk about me. I'm interested know, in the still. eyeballs. I've oh. got glasses and, you know, I, I'm really interested in hearing about what did it take? Did you have a mentor, somebody who could actually help you through the process? Because I know you've gone through the school, you've got the motivation, you've got the drive, you've done everything fantastic so far. And was there anybody who really just helped you out and encouraged you along the way? Did you have that or did you just motivate yourself? Uh, My parents definitely just pushed me to follow my dreams. So they were the ones that, you know, just let me loose and let me do my own thing. So they're the driving force. There you go. Inspirational. Thank you. As far as mine, uh, you know, I didn't have, I really didn't have one either. I just knew, I knew I wanted to go into something medical. I knew I wanted to go into something in the health field, um, but I really didn't like blood and guts. And, uh, you know, I faint, I faint when I cut myself shaving, so I didn't want to do surgery. Uh, but I had been seeing eye doctors all my life. My eyes are very bad, and so I had an interest in that. And uh, so it just came upon me one day. You know, I think I was a senior in high school when I was trying to think of what I was going to go into accounting. Wow. I was, I was really? Good. I was good with math. I was good with numbers. And uh, whenever I did a balance sheet, it always worked out. So I said, I'm going to go into business. <laughs> and, uh, and one of my um, relatives at the time said, Why? <laughs> and I, so I thought about it. I said, that's a good question. I said, I'm good at it. And uh, I started thinking more, more about it. And about then I went in for another eye exam. And I said, you know, this, I could probably do this, you know, better one or two and be in a dark room all the time and uh, not being outside working landscaping like I was doing at the time for my brother-in-law. So, I, you know, I decided to do that. And it just, it just clicked. And I ended up going in as a freshman at ASU wanting to do that. And graduating and going on to optometry school and and that's what i wanted to do and uh I, so i guess like may soon it was a it was an ambition and we wanted to do it and you know we did it it wasn't uh you know there are some people that try for different things and just kind of as you come down through the maze you end up here but i i had a drive that that's what i wanted to do um as she does too and so it, it just worked out so a lot of times it's just uh putting your head down and getting it done yeah let me ask you this the uh when did you decide to take this career change were you married at the time were you dating at the time or how which did the career, personal which well career? the career change to get into uh doing eye care as opposed to you know something else that you might have been considering I, I, this all happened in like i said i was in high school I, so when did you, did you get married in high school or did you get married afterward well not in high school you know <laughs> <laughs> 14 can i carry your books no <laughs> but, you know can you carry my veil no no i mean <laughs> i mean uh, no it was it was a done deal where i mean i was single through optometry school and asu and i didn't get married till well after that so when people a lot of times they meet in college oh yeah but but i mean when i went high to, school when i went to school they, i would say maybe a third of my class was already married when they started by the time we were done more than half more well more than half were married uh because a lot of them get married you know in college or now you're talking postgraduate you know you're uh, eight years of college so you're 26 25 26 when you graduate most of uh, most of them were married um so a lot of that happened life goes on even though you're studying and going to, going to school but you know a lot of us were single when we when we got out uh but most of these decisions i think are made before uh you're well on your way to matrimony and things. Yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. You're welcome not to. But how does that play into, you know, your your own personal goals? Do you plan to eventually, you know, maybe uh, ha- have a family and that sort of thing of your own? And does that play into the the educational plans? Is that taking away from your social life? Because I know you have all these other activities at school, mm-hmm. but do you have time to spend for yourself? Uh, yeah. My goal is that if I'm not married by 32, it's never going to happen. Really? So if I don't <laughs> okay. complete all my goals by the time I'm 32 and I haven't met someone, then it's a cutoff date. Too bad for me. Yeah. It becomes a bucket list item. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I'd like to do this before I go. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, oh, where was I going to take it before I? I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize 32 was her uh, was the drop dead date. Uh, is that well, old? That's when you're over the, the hill, I guess. Been, no, huh? I think you could probably go longer than that. 
you can, you can just you can still have you can still have things that, that happen to you. But uh, where were you going? Where were you going with that? I was just going. A lot of times, um, personal relationships tend to change career goals sometimes, well, and, uh, no especially doubt. Especially for uh, for young ladies, sometimes they meet someone who's already a professional, and they decide maybe it's something I don't need to do, or maybe it's something that I'll change to accommodate your schedule. You're going to go to school here. I'll follow you, and that sort of thing. One thing I always like to say, though, I think I think optometry is a great profession for for ladies, for women, and there's nothing negative about that. I say that only because optometry is not um, surgically inclined. We're not learning techniques that are um, state of the art. Uh, as far as I mean, what we, a lot of what we do is state of the art, but a lot of it is with machines and things like that. The uh, so if you take a year or two or three off. To raise a family if that's what you choose to do and you and you keep up with your continuing education you can come back at any point in time and just you know it's kind of like riding a bike and um i think it's a great career where you can do both together i changed my career plans to accommodate my wife because <laughs> her career was the stronger of the two at the time and you might call me the mr bomb at the time but the fact of the matter is i did what was strongest for the family right. not what was strongest for me personally exactly. it's a family decision. and so if if uh let's say may soon wanted to take a couple of years off and raise a family she could still come back to this career at any time she wanted to because, like I said, as long as you keep up with things that are changing in the profession, it's a, it's a great profession that you can leave for a little while and come back. And it's uh, 46 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, we're live from the Best Buy Studios. Give us a call, 480-423-1260. Staff of Tempe Eye Care Associates at 7511 South McClintock Drive in Tempe are committed to providing you state-of-the-art eye care services and products in a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Remember the bionic man? We're not quite there yet, but we're not as far away as you might think. Through annual comprehensive eye examinations, the goal at Tempe Eye Care Associates is to not only maximize your visual performance, but to ensure and maintain your healthy eyes. As part of your annual examination, your visual acuity will be measured and a test known as refraction is conducted to determine your eye's refractive power. Further tests are performed to determine your visual coordination, muscle control, and focusing abilities. Your examination will include a comprehensive evaluation of your eye health to detect diseases such as glaucoma, cataracts, and retina and optic nerve abnormalities. The the ocular health evaluation includes neurological assessments, measurement of internal eye pressure, and a thorough examination of the internal and external structures of the eye. Tempe Eye Care Associates also offers the OptoMap Retinal Examination System. OptoMap allows many patients the option to forego dilating drops by providing an ultra-wide view of the retina. While it doesn't replace dilation in all patients, it it's an option for many. After performing these tests, their doctors will discuss your results and, if needed, explain your prescription and give you a better understanding of your overall eye health. Traditional options such as glasses, contact lenses, and eye medications will be discussed, as well as any other options you may need to consider. Dr. C is available to assist you personally, so you know you're getting the best available eye care, even if you're not on the value. Valley's basketball, baseball, hockey, or football teams. You'll see better after you see Dr. C. To make an appointment to visit Dr. C, call his office right now at 480-967-4910. That's 480-967-4910. Help keep your eyes healthy regardless of where you live in the valley by starting with a call to the office of Dr. C. 480-967-4910 today. 480-967-4910 or visit www.tempeicareassociates.com That's www.tempeicareassociates.com Now 
Now the talk continues and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here's your host, Dr. C. Ten minutes to the top of the hour. We're at MBC 1260, uh, live from the Best Buy Studios. Give us a call, 480-423-1260. You've got about ten minutes to call and talk to this dynamic young lady we've been talking to for the last hour, almost hour. But um, May Soon's a senior at ASU, and she is going into uh, optometry as a career as soon as she gets done with a lot of other things she has planned. And uh, so we've been, if you've been with us, um, you all you know all about her and if you haven't been with us then you need to sit and listen for the next eight minutes or so but uh, we're going to get back into the um uh the process of uh you know admissions and even though you're you're not going through it yet i know you have a, a pile of stuff there in front of you is that from like every different school or is that just the ones you're interested in? I say that because she's got a pile of papers there in front of her. Um, It's from the Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry, so you'll find a lot of cool resources out there that just compile what every single school is looking for. So it's in one easy database. Yeah, Yeah. they're all very similar. And so, you know, we all have to take the the core courses. You know, we talked about the biology and physics and chemistry and calculus, et cetera. But they also look for, you have to take electives. And, uh, And I'm sure they... You know, when I was going through, they said, you know, they don't want you to take, you know, courtship and marriage as your in, uh, <laughs> human sexuality. That's what everyone, everyone takes as quote unquote easy uh, <laughs> electives. <laughs> what kind of electives have you taken? Um, my nonprofit courses were some of my electives. And then I took an extra biochemistry lab which oh, I realized one was wasn't ter- enough. No, I realized it was a terrible <laughs> idea. You don't want me working in your lab. <laughs> I apologize to my lab partner at the la- on the last day of school. You have issues with killing the frog and I have issues with pouring things in different yeah. containers. Yeah, biochem is going to be more the mad scientist. You, you've stuff. heard of licking the frog, right? No clue what See, you're talking he, about. No he clue. pulled that one on me last week. <laughs> there are people who like uh, I've read. I, I, I think I, I said I read about this, but really I saw it on TV. They they lick the frog, and suddenly they don't need to dilate their eyes anymore because it's <laughs> happening naturally. Yeah, it's like something on the uh, an exploration of. He the, pulled that out of the dark on me uh, like last week, and uh, <laughs> see, even she said, "What the heck are you talking about?" <laughs> so, what other what other electives have you taken? Um, he takes us off <laughs> off channel all the time. Go ahead. Wait, is that really true, though? Like yeah. The we'll, the we'll talk about it later. A, <laughs> it is true. And they, there's a, a, some certain frogs excrete something that's like a poison kind of thing, and they, they there are people who will lick it to get high, you know, I guess. I mean, but it's recreation. We're going to go, uh, you know, frog hunting and oh uh, watch our eyes dilate. I don't know about licking the frogs. That sounds a little bit strange to me. That's but what I what said. Other, and he what did, other kind of um, electives did you take? Because you were talking a minute about, about what was it called? I know that you were imitating beakers. In uh, the, a biochemistry lab. Biochemistry lab. What What is that? Uh, it's pretty much a lab, and <laughs> it's a five-hour lab, and you just wait for reactions to occur so you can see what's going on. Okay. How does that relate to your eyeballs? It doesn't. Okay. Well, it's all the biochemical. Well, it's all biochemical processes, well, and that's basically what what vision is. And so you have to learn about how the way all these chemical processes occur. And obviously, when you're dealing with a beaker in the in an off in a lab, it's not like what happens with vision. But what they're trying to show us is the different cycles that occur in the body and how all these chemicals tend to interact with each other. That's really interesting. I didn't know that it was a chemical reaction that caused you to see. Oh yeah, I mean it's all it's all neuro electro- electrical impulse it's i mean it's it's just an amazing process i mean how it's all put together i mean you you've got to believe there's some type of uh, <laughs> uh power going on there because it's just it's just amazing how how it all works back to the electives all right so i've taken a couple of music classes um I've been playing the piano for 14 years, so... Wow. I told you. We (laughs) should have had your music available to play. (laughs) That would have been great. It's called Healthy Eyes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I heard what you said about that disco song, and that was professionally done. I'm wondering what you would say about something that was... Uh A little little piano recital coming in. (laughs) So what was your favorite favorite non-scientific electives? 
non-scientific elective. Probably some of the nonprofit classes I've taken. Yeah, I uh, I got this thing. For some reason, I didn't want to do the normal stuff, and so I was a glutton for punishment. So I took two courses that were just kind of different, where I took a, a 300-level political science course one semester because I just... Was Don't you guys know how to that. play? Like, did you ever pull out Play-Doh <laughs> and, and then, you know, in like a cartoon? But then I also took a 400-level history of Russia from the Bolshevik Revolution forward. This is and, really serious and it was, stuff. It was, it, was, it, was, it was an amazing course. My only problem with it is when you take all these science courses, most of these science courses you take when they give you a test, they're um, multiple choice tests. And when you go into a history course, they give you these books that are about this thick and they want you to fill them up when you take a test so it's all written. I mean, they're not going to ask you multiple choice stuff because they want to know if you really understand the concepts. What went on, so I hadn't taken a, 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 a course where I had to write an answer in a long time, but yet you're writing these <laughs> thesis. You know, they give you four questions for a test, and you got to write for an hour. Uh, that was that was the most difficult thing I had to do was just <laughs> uh, write all my ideas down instead of circling A, B, C, or D. Yeah. But we made it through that. <laughs> but uh, we do that to make us more well-rounded. I have you to know? have you read that because I can't pronounce that stuff, and you're a doctor, so. Uh... Oh gosh. What has he got with it? He wants to go back to this toad thing. I just want to prove it's true. It's not. Well, I, I know it's this true. I just didn't want to talk about it on the air again. <laughs> People are gonna, they're going to tune out because all we talk about are frogs that you lick to dilate your... I it's a, psycho, actually a psychoactive the toad. <laughs> a psychoactive toad is a name used for toads for which psychoactive substances from the family of bufotoxins can be derived the skin and poison of whatever it's a colorado river toad or sonoran desert toad so they're close sonoran by desert, yeah contained contain a uh, a couple of different chemicals here we don't have to go into uh but basically due to these substances the skin or poison of the toads may produce psychoactive effects when ingested thank you mark for the info <laughs> So now we've got it. It's never going to come up again, right? <laughs> right. So we've got about five minutes before the top of the hour. So, Maysoon, what, in closing, you know, what would you say, uh, pardon me? Three minutes till the top of oh, the hour. Oh, I thought, I thought you had another question. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, what would you say uh, to someone who's listening about, you know, any words of encouragement, anything you'd tell them that you like or... Um, I would just say explore your options. You know, don't be afraid to try new things. I never thought I'd be working in an optometry office. Uh, definitely shadow different types of doctors, dentists, optometrists, you name it. Just call up a few local uh, places in the valley and see if they can fit you in. Yeah, and you know, and you'll be surprised. A lot of times they'll they'll do it, or they'll let you come by and shadow them for a while. Uh, it's a great experience because you know I used to I, I do a lot of work with uh, with Arizona State with the sports medicine department. And when I would uh, go see the trainers there, they'd be working on the athletes, and I told them they had a great. They were studying at ASU, but they were working in the uh, sports medicine department as trainers on these athletes. And I told them they had a great opportunity going for them because they were able to see what their future profession was in, in reality and while they were doing it, while they were studying it. And it gave them a great opportunity to, to see if that was something they could do for the rest of their lives. Because the last thing you want to do is go to school for eight years and get out and say, you know, I really don't like this. Yeah, and, and you see, said that the number of schools has actually increased. So mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's increased, and, and I would say just on a, on a quick note, it's because as our population ages you know the the, uh, the baby boomers are getting to be about 65 now everything everyone's going into medicare everyone's getting older that's when things start going wrong with the eyes and everything else and so they're viewing that as th that there is going to be a need for more professionals to help out i should say us because i'm at the end of that baby boom era but um, as we, as our generation goes through the our 60s and 70s there's going to be a, a larger need for uh, medical professionals and how do people get a hold of you guys if they'd like to ask you maybe more questions or actually come in and uh, no Should we see if Mason see knows you. the phone number? Yeah. 480-965-967-967. That was close. Ooh. 4910. 4910. And the website is www.tempeicareassociates.com. Or as I say every week, if you don't like to type it, www.drsee.com. Uh, we we kind of have to put the Tempe Eye Care Associates out there, but the Dr. C just makes it a little bit easier to, to type and get into. But uh, we, also, we also have a Facebook page uh, that we 
try to put things on every week, letting people know what we're going to talk about next week on the radio. Okay, great. And then if people want to come in and see you the first time appointment and everything, they just call up and uh, call, call up and call up to and Jane. see me sometime. Call up and talk to Jane, and uh, <laughs> she'll get you right in. Sounds good. And we will see you next week. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week on Healthy Eyes. NBC 1260 is KBSZ, Apache Junction. Also operates on translator K241BQ at 96.1 FM.